Welcome back. We're in the middle of proving Dumois' theorem by using mathematical induction. And essentially what we need to do right now to prove it is we're going to assume that this works. Uh, cosine theta plus i times sine theta all raised to the index n is equal to cosine n theta plus i times sine n theta. We're going to assume that that works and we have to prove that it works for the case when the index is n plus 1. So cosine theta plus i sine theta raised to the n plus 1 power is equal to cosine n plus 1 theta uh, plus i times sine of n plus 1 times theta. Now, in order to do this, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this expression here, what we're assuming to be true, and we have to, and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the left and the right hand side by cosine theta plus i times, uh, plus i sine theta. So on the left hand side we're going to get cosine theta plus i times sine theta to the n plus 1 power is equal to cosine of n theta plus i times sine of n theta was originally over here, multiplied by cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. Now, if you notice, we have the left-hand side agreeing. We need to show that this is true, and we have that both of these expressions are equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta raised to the n plus 1 power. So what we essentially need to do is we need to show that this expression here is equal to this expression here in, in order to prove our uh, de Moivre theorem. So let's just factor this out. We're going to say that this right here, just working, just going to write the right hand side from now on, that this is equal to cosine of n theta times cosine theta plus cosine n theta times i sine theta, cosine n theta times i sine n, oops, sorry, sine of just theta, plus i sine n theta times cosine theta, and plus um, sine n, i sine n theta times i sine, sine theta, which is actually just equal to minus, we're gonna get i squared, which is negative one times sine n theta times sine theta. Now let's group the real and the imaginary parts together. So this is real, this is real, this is imaginary because we have an i term here, and this is imaginary because we have an i term here. So let's group the real parts together. So we say that this is this whole entire thing is equal to cosine of n theta cos times cosine theta minus sine n theta times sine of theta. And we say that this is uh, plus, and then let's factor out the i, i times uh, cosine n theta sine theta plus sine n theta cosine theta. Now what we need to do is we need to try and simplify these up a bit. And the way we can do that is we can use our uh, some trig identities. Particularly, we're going to use the adding angles identity, which is just that sine of a plus b, that's just equal to sine of a times cosine of b plus sine of b times cosine of a. And we also know that cosine of a plus b, that's equal to cosine a 
times cosine b minus sine a times sine b. So we're going to use these two formulas here. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is that let's take a look at like a real part. Here we have cosine n theta times cosine theta minus sine n theta times sine theta, which is fairly similar to this bit here. We have cosine of something times cosine of another thing minus sine of something times sine of another thing. So we can say that this part in red, this part is like identical to this, provided that a is equal to n theta and b is equal to theta. So we can say that everything in this bracketed like red term, that's equal to this. Cosine oops, of n theta plus theta. And then likewise, we can apply this trig identity here. Here we have so, uh, we can say like sine of a times cosine of b pl plus sine of b times cosine of a and that's equal to sine of a plus b which is just i times sine of whoops, n theta plus theta. Now we can simplify this up a little bit more by factoring out a theta so we get that this is equal to cosine of n plus 1 times theta plus i times sine of n plus 1 times theta. Now that's exactly what we're trying to prove. So let's actually just take a bit step back and see what we're actually doing. We assumed that this case worked uh, for the index n and we had to prove that it works uh, for the case where the index is n plus 1. So we multiplied uh, this uh, up here by cosine theta plus i times sine theta, and we got that cosine of theta plus i times sine theta all raised to the n plus 1 power is equal to some mess, and we simplified that mess till eventually we got cosine of n plus 1 times theta plus i times n plus, oh, time, i times sine of n plus 1 times theta. So using the case, when, uh, assuming that it holds for the case where the index is n, we are able to prove that it also holds when the case, when the index is n plus 1. Which means those were the two criteria for our mathematical induction, which means that this expression will hold for all integer values of n. So there we have it. It might have been a bit confusing, but hopefully it wasn't too confusing. And we're going to carry on with more complex number stuff in the next video.